Welcome to Life Mastery Radio with Todd Allen and Jackie Bailey, the show that dives into the science of higher consciousness with inspiring topics such as abundance, intention, health, manifestation, love, and transformation. Join Todd, Jackie, and their guests of leading authors, speakers, coaches, and entrepreneurs weekly at 10 a.m. Pacific. Learn to live a peaceful life with intentional mastery. It's all right here with stories and messages to support your well-being and most evocative dreams. Now, here's your hosts, Todd and Jackie. <laughs> hey, 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 it's another groovy day. It's Life Mastery Radio Day, that's why. And I get to come and hang out with my good friend Jackie, and we bring you some awesome, awesome speakers, leaders, coaches. Did I say authors? Authors. We have an author for you today mm-hmm. who are on the cutting edge of their own becoming. But the really cool part is, is they're standing behind you, ready to push you off your edge of your own becoming. Is that kind of spooky? Well, that's <laughs> all it takes is that first step. Welcome to Life Master Radio, the talk show that brings you great thoughts and ideas for you to use on your very own Life Mastery journey. And as always, there she is, just a big smile on her face, my co-host, good friend, all around... Be careful, be careful. (laughs) All around, you know, just somebody that I can always count on and she can count on me. And it's just really cool that we and we get to do Life Master Radio once a week together. So we do. Hi, everybody. It's great to great to be back this week and back in my own space instead of. Yeah, let's see. Last week you were in Philly. Yes. I was in Philly last week in an awful Airbnb. I'm glad I escaped that situation. Did you end up staying there? <laughs> no, I left. As soon as the show was over, I left um, and found another place that was much better. Did, did the guy give you your money back? I mean, was it all? I got the money back for two nights that I, that I wasn't there. But then he tried to charge me um, for early check-in. Um, even though it was 30 minutes early and he helped me with the lock at 30 minutes early and never mentioned that you know what it's best if you wait another half hour or i'm going to charge you a hundred bucks for checking in early so i disputed that and he didn't get his money so (laughs) so it all worked out (laughs) well there 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 yeah there are repercussions for doing or putting something out there that may not be as advertised right i guess is absolutely you know you got to protect yourself and and uh, this was not necessarily like, his fault. well, it wasn't necessarily his fault, but he could have controlled the situation a little bit better than he did. Mm-hmm. But the old Jackie would have said, mm, I guess I just had to put up with this because really, you, know, you think so? I am. Yeah. But over the last, you know, year or so, I'm like, nah, this is below my standards. I'm not staying here. I'm going to do yeah. whatever I need to, to get out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I've always known you to be that way, though. I kind of think, anyway, that, you know, you stand up for yourself pretty good. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, really like cool. That. How are things at the Speak, Feed, Lead project? Well, that's the good news. You know, there's so much joy that comes when you see young people find themselves or find their voice. And I get so excited when I get to hear them talk. And um, we have a, the Speak a Boom weekly club now. Uh, and we had some students record some things that they like about speak a boom it was not at all i wasn't holding a gun to their head or anything like that but they gave some really good feedback about why they love the club and they called it a family um and so when they say things like that i know that what we're doing is helping them to be authentic helping them to to feel comfortable um being who they are and that's all that really matters yeah once you open that gate jackie and you're the you're the gatekeeper once you open that gate to them you know just like you said speaking your mind and speaking their peace and 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 getting the stuff that is important to them through their voice box and out into the world there's just no stopping them no it's it's incredible to watch as long as um, it's respectful right i mean and and that all goes along with it I mean, there's a lot of youth that they show on TV and news and stuff these days. And you go, oh, my gosh, (laughs) what are we in for? But I'll tell you, too, that there are some amazing young people out there who have it 
all together I and they get that. it and they're caring and they're kind and they're they're good leaders already and they're destined to be fabulous leaders as they get more and more opportunities to learn yep. so the more you influence the more they influence others and it's just a, a exponential growth aspect and it just has has nothing but good good outcome I think. And how are you doing? Our audience is probably curious about you. You know, we know. I look pretty good. About, I sound pretty you good. Great. And you sound back to your normal self. <laughs> I'm halfway through chemotherapy and just about halfway through radiation therapy. And yeah, I should, <laughs> I should be speaking to a doctor today and maybe I can get a progress report. Is all of this making headway are we making progress i personally right. feel like we're making progress but it's nice to nice to get that affirmation that yeah what you're going through what you're dealing with is is for the good yeah because because you use a word to describe to me what you what you deal with most of the time which is horrific it's horrific and, yeah and i you know i you look great and most people who don't know you would see you in not realize what you're going through and i think that's a lesson for all of us that we have no idea what people are dealing with you know we need to I, be kind because we don't know there's a lot of it comes from gratitude a lot of it comes from you know a good positive mental outlook um and i'm just i'm grateful to be able to be here today hanging out with my best friend jackie bailey and you know our guest and having a great discussion and yeah it's all good. And I think a lot of it is, you know, it's a whole holistic viewpoint. It's mind, body, and spirit. And, you know, you got to work on that mind. You got to keep the body healthy and you got to work on your spiritual life. And I think those three together and the little help from our medical industry, which is the body part, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> we can get through it. I think a lot of it, though, is mental and attitude and outlook. Yeah. Well, I've always admired that about you, Todd, in that you practice what you preach. I mean, you've had Life Mastery Radio for many, many, many years now, and you've you've spotlighted so many amazing people who come on and they're, they talk about their journey and how they found the connection to source or universe or the dude, as, as you know, Pam Grout says. Uh, and you've always been full of that language. You've always had that energy of positivity. And in fact, I've heard you say, I don't want to give any negative energy to this, you know, but um, so I watch you and I know that horrific is probably the appropriate word to describe it. And yet, <laughs> and yet you practice what you've been preaching all these years, yeah. which is we can, we can okay. have some control over our thoughts and the way we're feeling. And we can always have gratitude and find, find the good, even though it's not easy. I know that's not easy for you, but um i appreciate your example very much yeah namaste my friend i love you so much you are you, that's why that's why i like hanging around you <laughs> okay are we ready for a really big show we have a really cool guest today we have a dream builder a true true dream builder who has found a niche market and continues to help others follow their dreams our guest today is, oh, I'm going to find it now. Yeah, nice introduction. Karen Pudetti. And she came straight out of college into a highly successful accounting career in corporate, including working for several Fortune 500 companies. But it just didn't light her fire. <laughs> it says up, oh, but I know what that's like. Didn't light her fire. <laughs> so she decided to venture out on her own. What other, what other, motivation can there be the small salon building that she ultimately took over couldn't even accommodate the growth of her luxe salon spa and laser and the next thing she knew she was at a nine thousand square feet and expanding i'll tell you i have a ten thousand square foot machine shop with 12 employees i can just imagine that kind of space for the beauty industry that is huge yeah, that is huge springboarding to becoming one of the nation's leading consultants to other salon and beauty company owners but karen made a few mistakes along the way as it should be along the way and has watched others struggle her firm commitment to help others who dream of a life as a successful entrepreneur i think that's the american dream period 
either in the beauty industry or any other retail service business, moved her to write Rags to Riches, How Beauty Icons Made It Big. Karen Pudetti, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Look at that. There's another big smile. She's got her hair all done, makeup <laughs> on, lipstick. <laughs> Hi, I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you here. So it's kind of so this journey. How long ago was it you graduated? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to put you in a position. <laughs> yeah, careful. <laughs> <laughs> but how long has this journey been going? Um. Well, I graduated college in 1990. So uh, a long time. A long time. <laughs> My oldest daughter was born in 1990. Well, I wasn't born then. I was well graduating high school. I get that. College. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're we're pretty close to the same age or anything. Yep. So um yeah, I, I went to college for accounting and finance. And when I came out, I started working um for the CPA firms. And I enjoyed it a lot. I was here in Rochester, New York. And then I did some work in Boston for a couple of years, wanted to try the big city. And then I was like, okay, I've done this. I'm not really liking it. And I then I went to some corporate big um, Fortune 500 companies and I did that. And that's when I was like, okay, it doesn't really matter what where I'm working. It's still accounting. You know, if you're, if you're an auditor or an accountant working at another for a firm and going to a business, they're basically putting you in the basement, no windows. They don't want to see you. They don't <laughs> want to hear from you. So I was just like, this isn't really like, I can't imagine doing this for another 15 years. Never forget life. And I was like, this is not it. This is not it for me. And then I was like, I'm going to go back to school. And I always loved the beauty industry. And a lot of people will ask me why, why the beauty industry? And I just, this is a funny story. When I was younger, my mom taught modeling and there was me and my two younger sisters. And at the end of their like classes or session, they would have a huge production day. They would have people from New York City come in. They'd be doing commercials. I mean, there was like things going on. They would have a fashion show where, you know, big people came in. And I remember like, it was just such a buzz and people would walk in the morning, you know, with a ponytail on their hair and then they were being transformed. And I never really got that. I was still young, probably nine years old. And I remember my, my mom says, okay, you girls are gonna get your hair and a little makeup done for our age. And I remember when we were done, I remember just thinking, wow, like I kind of really felt pretty. And I was just like, wow, this like, and it was just this kind of, feeling that came over me like I I felt really good I became, all of a sudden had all this confidence like I could try to do anything I wanted to mm -hmm. and I remember it was just a big like it sat with me and it you know was like heavy on my heart that that you know that little transformation melt me, made me feel so different so good right. inside the spark was lit <laughs> yeah. And I remember that. And, and as I went through life, every time I was scared to try something new or do something, I would go back to that feeling. Yeah. And that kind of resonated with me. Like, I got this, I can do it. And so when I was thinking about it, I was like, I want to do that for people. You mm -hmm. know, I, I want them to look good, but I want them to feel good. I want them to like change maybe their inspiration, how they feel about themselves, how they look at themselves. And then that's how I kind of picked the beauty industry. Well, that that might that must have been. I can just imagine what some of your friends thought, right? So going from a CPA for Fortune 500 companies, and now you want to go to beauty school. Yeah, they, they must my have friends. Been. My mother looked at me horrified, <laughs> horrified. I said, I came home and I said, I decided I'm going to change my career, and she looked at me like okay I'm like she didn't even know what this meant actually and I go I'm gonna go get my like I want to get my um electrolysis license my waxing my aesthetics and she just looked at me with these big eyes and she goes oh. I go what are your thoughts and she couldn't even talk she goes now I'm old enough at this point to, to make my own decision she was sure. you to talk to your dad and I'm like <laughs> 
okay, I'll let him know too. I, I was just, I was, you know, yeah. doing any getting feelers out there. And my, I went and I told my dad and my dad says, you know what, Karen, try it. What's the worst thing that could happen to you? And I'm like, well, I don't like it. And I go back to the counter. He goes, perfect. Yeah, so Johnny will always answer. be there, right? <laughs> what a great answer. That, it I mean, was. That, that's truly a father right there looking out for his kid. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I remember, and it's funny because I use that with my kids when they say, you know, I really want to do such and such. And you're like, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, okay, yeah. So, and and so he was like the, the inspiration or a little kick in the pants to say, yeah, it's good. I can go do it. Why do you think your parents, or at least your mom mostly, was hesitant for you to do that? I think um, I, I grew up in a very traditional family. They they um, were from a small town. They got married young. My dad went to college uh, for electrical engineering when when they, they were married. So my mom worked, helped put him through school. He worked, and so she became a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I think truly that was her life's dream, what she wanted to do. So I mean, it was she wasn't, but she didn't go to college. She didn't have a career. So it was my dad who kind of had the career. So every time I would say stuff to her, even my, even the time like I was trying to in life trying to figure out if I wanted to buy a condo or a house, and I was pretty young, but I had the money to do it, and I couldn't really figure it out what I was going to do. So I came home. I bought a boat, a speedboat. I came home and I right told off. <laughs> and she goes, "You did what?" Like, and she goes, "Are you kidding?" I go, "No. Here's the picture of it." So, you know, so she liked traditional things, I think, because that's right. how she was brought up. Yeah. Well, so you can understand. And, and so what did you do with this speedboat? I'm I'm just curious. I, I, I It just blew me away when you said you bought this speedboat. Oh, yeah. So I had them delivered to the marina and I would go out on it every chance I could. To me, that was my escape from reality. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, at the time. Good way to get was, guys, too, though, right? What was that? That's a good way to get guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's another whole situation. Like we, <laughs> I had, if I was on my boat with like my sisters or my friends, the lifeguards would always kind of pull us over, and I'd be like, "What?" And they go, "We're doing a safety check." And I'm thinking, "Yeah, sure you are." <laughs> yeah, the life and times of a of a young man trying to find. A, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So this, so this was, you got the boat then before you started into electrolysis training and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, that I got at a um, younger age. Yeah, when I was wow. still in corporate America. Mm -hmm. So you were someone that was always making your own decisions anyway. It sounds like you enjoyed hearing what other people thought, but you always made the final decision anyway. So, yeah. so you decided, this is what I'm going to do. I'm changing my career because... I want people to feel as good about themselves as I did. So what happens next? Did you start to rent someplace or what? No, no. Because I also, um, like uh, at that point I was going through infertility. I wanted to be, I didn't, I wanted to be a stay at home mom, mm -hmm. but also make money. So if something happened to my husband, like I would be financially okay. That was one of my goals. I always had to be financially okay. Mm -hmm. I had to depend on somebody. You know, if I have a child, I'm going to support them to the lifestyle I want to be able to provide. Um, so that I got that. And then I started, um, I set up a, a little spot in my house and it's separate entry and all that. So I had two rooms, a, a waiting area. And so people would start I work two days, two and a half days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and half a day on Saturday. I, in the process, I did have a child. I had a um, nanny who came into the house, so it was wonderful. Someone couldn't make it. I was always right there on those days, so I knew what was going on. And I did that for a long, well, let's see, until about for three or four years, I did that. But it got to be the point where... Um, <laughs> My daughter was like two or three at the time, and she thought she was the hostess. So she'd come in and <laughs> greet my clients and talk to them. Um, but it, I got to the point where I was so busy. Like there, there was weeks where I'd see over 200 people in those wow. day, days and time. And I was just like, I now really need to separate this. Um, 
And so I was like, I wanted other people to work for me a little bit as well. So I decided to, I looked and researched and was asked to partner up with several people. And I knew that wasn't a really good fit. You know, that wasn't good for me. I would be too bossy yeah. and they would hate me. And it would be simple as that. <laughs> Um, so I bought an existing little spa. I bought the spa and I did, I went into due diligence, um, did everything, but there was two sets of books and I didn't know that. Mm. So I purchased it and after the closing realized that, um, basically two sets of books, what I got to see was lovely, what, what, what that wasn't it. And so the person who I bought it from was 30 days away from being bankrupt. Oh my goodness. Yes. So thank God it was an asset sale. So I wasn't taking on any of her liabilities, right. but I did then realize, okay, I need to turn this place around very, very, very quickly. Well, that's a good opportunity. And that's a good way to get it turned around, especially on an asset sale. Yes. You're not buying any of the liabilities. You have a brick and mortar and it's your job then to turn a profit. Yes. So, you know, I came into this meeting and announced myself to the staff and um, they looked at me like, who the heck is she? And I and I said it, I was very straightforward. When I found out what happened. I said, we need to make decisions. We can work as a team. I, I'm very interested in your input. You know, I want you guys to make more money. And so within... I. We closed in February. By December, we really made a $250,000 profit nice. from everything they did. But we needed to change a lot. I needed to have the team buy into it. I needed to for them to really understand that this will benefit their pay, their lifestyle as well. So it was a big, uh, there was kind of a couple, oh my gosh, oh my gosh moments throughout that. <laughs> Did well, you maintain most of the staff that was there? Did you end up losing some and having to get more? No, miraculously, I kept every single one of them. That's amazing. It's because yeah, of your honesty. Doesn't... What was that? Because of your honesty, more than likely. Yeah, and, I, and I'm a straight shooter. And I'll tell you the good, the bad, the problems, the issues. Um, and we were, we that year, we between that time, we also took on uh, three and a half one person was part-time. So three and a half people to, to increase the services. Cool. Good for you. Yeah, I can imagine. I know when I started out, I had no accounting background. I didn't even, you know, you talked about a P and L. I didn't even know what a P and L was. I didn't, I, I created this business license with, or I mean a business plan with a bunch of blue sky across it. So I could get the bank to loan me some money and, the only thing I was good, I was a machine whisperer and I could, machines told me what was wrong with them and I could fix them. And I did good doing that. And this thing ballooned around me and it was just, oh, it was such a head spin. I can remember the first three years, the only days I took off, I think were Christmas. Wow. And then it just blossomed and it's been alive now for 23 years. And most of the people that are working for me today have been with me 15 years plus. So Wow. Yeah, it, that it, says volumes that mm -hmm. says huge volumes too to you know I, just you. like you said i've always been up front and honest this is where we're at this is a position this is what we got to do da, 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 da. And i'm here for you guys as much as you're here for me so let's you know make it work and mm -hmm. you know that is such great business philosophy to keep a, a, in a business going and to grow it yes yeah so what happens next? <laughs> um, well, at that point, we were, it was a small, well, I, it was just a spa. So I rented the space next door, put a salon on, um, got that going. That was going really well. And then I was a second person in Rochester to bring in. I had laser hair removal. So that was bombarding. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and we, we were to the point, like, we had kind of re redesigned our space like three times to kind of keep adding things and doing things. I'm like, there's no way we can re add anything else. And I, one of my long-term goals was to always buy a building. So uh, my husband and I bought our building together because he said, we're going to buy it together because if you go buy it, you're going to ask me 4,000 questions every day about the building. And I'm like, yeah. So, you know, he, 
it's Hard funny enough. when we we are, we met later kind of in life and you know i was financially stable he was financially stable so we we're like and i didn't i want didn't want my business to become his business i wanted him to go do his thing like he was doing but we said okay we'll buy the building together so um so we did and we bought a, um, a building at 16,000 square feet it's on a major intersection because i also wanted to be able to rent space you know so i was hoping the rented space would pay the taxes because our taxes are $45,000 a year oh, and i wanted the space to pay for that the other space so yeah so and then um we bought it and it took a year to redesign it i moved every single wall except for the exterior walls you can't move those <laughs> no i did move i did take away one of the um one of the walls it's the weight bearing wall so i had to Road redo bearing. it because it was like in the way mm. but, yeah so it was a huge project um it was it was it was a huge project. I tend not to worry about all the things that will come up and just dive in and start taking care of them. Take the next step. So you had a step. spa and a salon again, or did you add more to it? And did you close the other location when yes. that was up and running? Okay. Yeah, I moved um, 1.9 miles and it was teeny and small and I was renting. So I was glad that was done. Mm -hmm. um, so we moved here. Um, so now... Like at my old place, we had five little stations for hair. Now we have 12. Um, we have a huge nail room, a laser room, electrolysis room, some eyelash rooms. We have a sanctuary, boutique, and then massage and aesthetics rooms. Wow. I was going to I was gonna ask you how you fill up 9,000 square feet, but now I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, no, yeah, that's no how we No sauna, did. huh? You don't we, have a sauna? We have an um, infrared sauna. <laughs> I knew there had to be one in there. So. Yeah, we do. We have an infrared one. So, but it was really funny when we first came to this building. I could never find anyone. I was like, "Where is people?" I could never. <laughs> Whereas the other place, we were bumping into space. each other like every ten minutes or something. It was so. It was funny at first. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And you probably used local uh, architects and construction companies and things like that to do the yeah, work. Yeah, everyone. But everyone was local and it was the um, economy in general there nice. yeah excellent so then you get so successful <laughs> other salons start coming to you going karen how did you do this or how did how did that process work yeah so i i was like okay this is done and i was like and, and i was still working on people on, on clients as well but i started transitioning away from working on clients who really wanting to build the business. So I had hired a, a coach and a consultant before to help me. And then I'm like, wait, I want to do what you're doing. That sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that's how I began. I got into that. And then I was doing consulting for salon and spas all around the United States. And I love, love doing it. Um, so I would do some travel because at this point now I have two daughters and I'm thinking, I don't want to be home, but I like to just get away a teeny bit for like a long weekend, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So I did that. And I was loving, loving that. The one thing when I do it that I found a lot was people were really great at what they did. Like they're, whether they're groomers or stylists or nails, massage, aesthetics, but they didn't really run a business. So when they realized like, oh, the owner's probably making a lot of money because they don't know, they see money coming in all the time. They don't see the money going out all the time. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, um, you know, people see that. So they're like, well, I want to do that. I want to be the person who's making all this money. So that's what happens in our industry. So they go out on their own. Yeah. And they go out, they start, they have the clientele, but they have no idea truly how to run the business. And right. our business is a little different than some. I mean, you have to have your percentage of your ratios as far as your back bar to retail, your sales to retail sales. You got to know what that percentage is. So you're not, you know, ordering too much and having too much inventory. Right. Uh, you have to have controls on your inventory. So 
you know, you learned all this, but people didn't know how these, this information in any right. way, shape or form. So, you know, and a lot of times they didn't have a PL or know how to use a PL. <laughs> and uh, you would, you sit down and start crunching their numbers. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, just so you know, you're losing, you know, 25,000 every month. Yeah. Or it would be the, the person knows that they are this great, you know, stylist, whatever, but they 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 can't pay their bills. They're like, where's all my money going? Right. So my two things I always always say to people who are want to have their own businesses. There's two things. Every penny that comes in, you need to record it, and every penny that goes out, you need to record. There's a lot of people say, well, you know, it was only fifty dollars, only a hundred dollars. It's only yeah. the, and they think like that's like you know slush fund money. It's like it's having not. a bucket. It's like having a bucket with holes in it. Yeah. <laughs> so you know it you will think, add up. Yeah. Where did this go? And so there was that. And then the other thing is, if you're not good at something, don't do it. So like my background, accounting, finance, business, that's my thing. Yeah. But if it's not yours, get a bookkeeper, get an accountant, get somebody that can do it for you, and then show it to you, break it down, say. This is what we need to change. This number is way out of whack. What can we do to change this number? So that way they're guiding you to mm -hmm. your prop, better profits. Well, I think when you boil it down though, Karen, isn't it? You got to know what your cost is. Yes. You, so so to do what you're doing, this is what it's costing you. And if they're back, if, if they're upside down, then you either got to make some cuts or change some rates or do something, but you've got to know what your cost is in order to 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 see that you're at least moving forward and you got to have that on real time it's oh yeah like off the top of your head so if you say oh why don't we you know this week so why don't we discount something all of a sudden you i hear people do this all the time well we'll get we'll take 25 percent off great so every time you do that one service you're going to lose 25 dollars. that doesn't sound like a great plan yeah <laughs> yeah so you think about that. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So I'm certain that your accounting prowess was an advantage that you had that most salon owners didn't. Yeah, totally. Right. Which is. Were you a so CPA? I bet your Karen? mom was eventually very proud of you for being able to have that education, right? Even though maybe you weren't a CPA as a career, it came in handy, right? Were you a Were you a real CPA, Karen? Yeah, for a very short time until I realized that it wasn't helpful. Yeah. 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 Wasn't and, and, you know, if you're going to use it, you know, obviously do your continued right. education, stuff like that. When I went into corporate, it was a stepping stone to get into corporate. But a lot of times they wanted you to have your CPA, but then they wanted you to get your MBA. And I actually thought about doing it. And so I, th I thought, okay, I just don't want to do any of this. It's yeah. not clicking for me, not yeah. working. Yeah. It's good. So maybe let's just talk about that a little bit about that feeling when you've spent a lot of time and energy working on a, a goal and then you get there and it's like, yeah, this isn't it. What, what advice can you give people about just, you know, looking elsewhere? Um, you know, the, the saying is follow your passion. First of all, that's extremely true. And if it's not getting you up in the morning to be excited to go to work and, you know. When did you know? Good. When did you know it wasn't working? Um, I knew like a year and a half into the CPA. Well, I, if I'm honest, probably after the third week of being at the CPA. And then I thought, okay, I'll go to, you know, corporate. And it was fun for about yeah, a couple months. And then I was just like, and I kept saying, oh, but I'm working on this project and I'm going to be doing this. So I kept thinking, I was kept hoping like it would hit me. And I'm like, okay, hmm. it's not hitting me. And it, and I knew in my heart of hearts, like, I think the, the day I quit my accounting job and gave my notice and stuff, I was like, like, I felt like someone took this 50 pound weight off my chest. And I just remember going, I'm so happy. And, and the hard part really was that I was making a lot of money pretty young mm -hmm. and I was used to a lifestyle that I was also going to have to give up and I thought I don't really care I'll get there it's big that is huge yeah so are you 
I'm guessing, based on just the a little amount of time that we've been talking to you, that you're a people person and that you weren't getting those relationships <laughs> in as a CPA, right? But as a salon owner, you were getting to talk to people, you were forming relationships, you were building clientele. Is that part of it, do you think? It is a little bit. It's funny though, but when I thought about, when I went to college to pick out, you know, what am I gonna do? I, I like numbers. I like money, I like numbers, and I liked being in control of my own kind of financial destiny. Mm -hmm. So that's what I liked. Um, and I think as I got older, it, it, I realized that I liked people. And then I realized even more, I love the mentoring and the, like when I started helping people and consulting and I could see their lives changing and how happy they were, they were grateful. They, that they're living like their best or better lives. Mm. I love that I could help them do that. And it's even like my staff now, we do one-on-ones and they're really, it's me mentoring, you know, especially if they're younger coming on, I still have one-on-ones with people who have worked with me for 15 years, but we meet once a month, just what's working, what's not, but the young ones, you know, okay, I want it, we're going to go over your numbers. I want it, we're going to role play. Here's a proper handshake. You know, I'm big into speak educated. Don't use slang. Like, Yo, mm -hmm. come on over. No, no, yo, come on you over. Go, girl. <laughs> I love you know. that. <laughs> so I I have learned through the years that I love doing that. And I love watching kind of, whether it be a, a um, spa salon or uh, one of my team members, you know, do that. One of the things we do at the very end of each year for the next year is we have a planning meeting and I have them write down all their personal goals. Like, you know, I want to buy a house. That's I want to cool. buy a new car. I want to go on vacation. Then I ask them, you know, what are you, obviously your professional goals? Do you want more education? And then I ask them, how much money do you want to make? You know, and everyone's answer is different and depending where they are in their career. Okay. So now we have to break that down to what you need to make, you know, yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, based on when you work. And if you're not hitting those numbers, then it's my job to help you get there. Nice. That is so insightful. Yeah. That's, that makes a big, so I hope everybody out there is taking notes. If you are a business owner or you're think, considering starting a business, don't even consider it. Just do it. You got to do it, right, Karen? I mean, it's yes. just, do it, and, and but be logical about it. Have some kind of written plans, like you know your your one year, your five year, your ten year old your goals. Methodically think what you need to do for each one. Um, and if you know, you that was so big for me when I created that business plan and did the one, three, and five. And the, you know that piece of paper, big thick, you know, multiple pages. Mm -hmm got me a loan from the bank, which there's another big issue is I didn't get enough. So whatever you're thinking, get oh. three times that much. <laughs> totally. I, I, I mean, but I handed that to the bank and then it went in a drawer and I took off and it wasn't until about the sixth or seventh year. I thought, you know, where is that thing? And I started looking at, I hit those numbers almost exactly. Mm -hmm. It totally blew me away on how close I was in the growth. And I, yeah, I, I, I made the numbers too small, Karen. That's what I did. <laughs> that's because you had a plan. You stuck to it. Yep, that's cool. But do you mentor just salon owners or do you help all small business? Uh, salon, spa, muddy spas. Uh, I've had people come to me that want to start like a boutique, um, different things. Um, so I, I'll do that. I mean, even with my staff, I have a financial packet they go through. And I love to do this with my young people who start working with me. And they, and I don't have to see the numbers. And they, so it's just for them to really understand their own money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I kind of got tired of people coming in and say, I need a raise because I can't pay my bills. <laughs> no, That's you don't not how it. this works. <laughs> yeah. And so I put a whole package together 
And so they come in and, um, you know, anyone I've done, you know, some, some of the older people's kids as well and them and their husband, but they kind of co come in and put every single bill they have, their income, what they want to spend for different areas. And we figure it out. And, you know, it's A funny budget. when you put it on paper, they actually see like, oh, no, I can see why I'm not being able to pay my bills. I had one person um, that smokes pot and that was a category there and it was a really large number mm. and they decided that they were, they, they decided that they probably needed to stop doing it altogether. And I said, oh, that's an amazing decision. Yeah. <laughs> For your benefit and mine. Yeah. 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 That yeah. thankfully was an employee. It was uh, somebody's son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are some so, of the particular challenges that salons, spas, and, and those types of business, businesses have that people don't think about when they start a business? Um, some of the biggest ones are the person who starts the business, whether it be spa, medi spa, salon, they're the, they're the top winner. So they are the top person making the money. So instead of taking that money home, now they're paying for everything else in the spa. Mm -hmm. So they're floating the spa and salon. So my first advice is if you're not an accountant or a CPA, not a CPA, but, or a bookkeeper, get one, get one to help you do it. Set up your P and L, set it up monthly, set up. So you have the whole yearly spreadsheet one. If you do something well, you do that. If you don't, like I'm it's terrible at social media, terrible. <laughs> when you I said, do you want to do that thing before we were talking and, and you said you have a team, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm not even going to try doing that because I'd be there all day with trying to get that done. So my social media skills are terrible. Mm -hmm. I have to hire somebody. And then I, you know, you have to start off small. You're not going to go from working in a place to all of a sudden having this huge place. You make small steps. And then the next huge thing is every time you do something more than once, make a procedure, yeah. write it down and, and put it together. So if you answer the phone, what is your verbiage? How do you agree people? What's the verbiage when they come in the door? Because now if you have to hire somebody to answer the phones, here's your manual here's your book this is how you do it and so you're already starting to to have consistency procedures in place so that is gigantic because most owners of these you know salon spas or any small thing they come in they have a list of things they want to do but then they get pulled in so many directions mm -hmm. they're putting out fires and they're not doing what they do best yeah that's how you duplicate the vision one of the smartest things I did was hire an accountant. He was very expensive, but I had no, I had nothing as far as any of that, but he came in helped me get set up. He's still with me today. He's still very expensive, but <laughs> he's kept me out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So like I tell people, especially if they're small, get a bookkeeper who knows like QuickBooks, they can put everything in, set up your QuickBooks. And then quarterly, take your QuickBooks and your, your you know, a, a bookkeeper to see an accountant. And then they'll tell you what else you need to do as a way of doing it. So you wrote this really cool book. It's called Rags to Witch Riches. This might be a cue for you to hold your book up. Okay. Rags to Riches, <laughs> How Beauty Icons Made It Big. Uh, yeah. I'll maybe tilt it a little bit. There it is. It can be found on Amazon. So entice me a little bit. What am I going to learn? What am I going to learn? What am I going to find out? What am I going to think about? What am I going to figure out if I purchase your book and start going through it? And it doesn't, I, I know you're really niche market and that is a key to success is finding your niche. But this pretty much applies to all startups and small businesses. Yeah, what, am I, so what, what am I going to figure out? So first of all, I wanted to write a book that was entertaining. So you weren't, you know, reading a manual of some sort. So I... Okay. I kind of went down and tried to figure out who are the biggest icons, who are my big, who have struggled and made it big. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, but I wanted a, a person from every, every area. Like I wanted a groomer, I wanted a hair set, I wanted a nail person, I wanted a medi spa, I wanted somebody who started a salon who then sold half of the company for $10 million. I mean, I wanted big stuff. 
So I interviewed them. They were phenomenal. Then there's this different assessments because each chapter is on a di different business, um, a different like marketing, Versus. yeah, P and Ls, um, branding. So it's on a different uh, thing. And then after that, genre, genre, aspect, thank you. aspect of business. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it goes into some education on it. So. Um, so there was like three parts to every chapter. Um, and I'll just tell you a short story. One of the people who I love, I loved each of them. And they all really start out very, very humble beginnings. Damone Roberts, he is the guru for eyebrows to Oprah, Madonna, Rihanna, Beyonce. I mean, the list goes on and on. Tony Robinson, everybody under the sun. And he started out. And he came from a pretty, um, he didn't say poor, but it was a poor family, you know, where like tonight for dinner is beans. So, you know, he had this family struggle, he struggled and he talks about his journey. And the one thing is that he's so humble. Like when I asked him, you know, I sent a media kit and all this other stuff to him and he said, yes, but he was like, I was so nervous interviewing all these people because they're just so big but like I was sitting just talking to like a good friend across the table and he would be telling me stories so at one point in our interview um there was my assistant in there me and him were he had me and my assistant like crying telling us the story that involved one of his very best friends um who passed mm -hmm. and Oprah came in and it was the first time he was um she was he was doing her eyebrows and he wasn't going to say anything because he was playing it cool but then he ended up telling Oprah Winfrey about um his friend's journey and he passed away and that he lived to watch her show and in her last month or two like that was all he kind of lived for and um Damone would watch it with him and so Oprah Winfrey says, so um, do you, do you know, you know, um, the mom, do you think I could get the address? And he goes, oh, you would write to her? And he's like, yeah. She says, yeah. So he goes, uh, yeah, it's, well, he goes, I, I don't know. He goes, it was down the street and three houses around the corner. He didn't know the address because he just always was there. Yeah. And I laughed. And then he goes, well, how about, the, she says, how about the phone number? And so she called the mom the mom started talking to her and then she goes, can I gonna go out back for, and, and you know, can I pray with her? And she ended up praying with this woman, talking to her for like a half an hour. It was so moving and so like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it was really, really like amazing. And then he starts telling us another story about Madonna that he went to her house. It took him an hour to get through all the security he finally gets inside. He's standing in her room. She's in their kitchen. She's finishing up a manicure. And so the manicurist gets up and leaves. And there's 12 security people in the room, like all around the, the perimeters of the room. I don't know and if I so, could live like that. But... No, I couldn't. I'd be like, everyone, make yourself home, watch TV, you know. <laughs> but um, she says, you over here now. And Damone was like, <gasps> He goes, I clutched my pearls. I didn't even know what that meant, but I do now. And he goes, oh, no, no, no. You cannot talk to me like that. And so the security guys all kind of snickered. One left the room. They're, they're laughing, kind of trying to hold in like that. And so she, she said, I stood there, held my ground, and she looked me up and down. She goes, you're right. We're going to be good friends. Come on over. But yeah. he said he would have left. He said, I'm, you know, she's no different than I am. Set yeah. your boundaries. Yep. And so those stories are in your book. Is that the yep. deal? Yep. They're in my book. So they tell you about, you know, how someone started their journey, their ups and downs, some funny stories um, about each of them. And then so you again, have some stories and you also have some tips and tricks. Yes. Now, as far as tips and tricks, I've put a lot into this book. Um, like half of my marketing campaign that I have used 
and that works because you know everyone has a marketing campaign they say oh i do this every year and you say okay great what's the results what did it what was the income from that results uh they have no idea <laughs> so I, it, as far as that i have in there so all my marketing in there um each chapter like we talk about branding we talk about your ideal client like and there's a two pages in here in the book well that's that's real important to be able to because you have to create the vision of what your client looks like acts like thinks about and what what they want when they walk through that door absolutely and i had one of matthew collins is a hair hairstylist to the celebrities and he actually without you know being told wrote a four page um list of his ideal clients and he talks about it and so it's in the book and then he tells how he he used that to market he'd bring all his um good girlfriends over you got a makeup artist he did their hair the makeup artist did their makeup and they would go out to a big you know in where he lives in a big city he is now in California and they rent a limo but they would stop at really high-end restaurants or bars and kind of make a scene walking in talking to people <laughs> and people were like who did your hair who did your hair and their mission really wasn't to go out and get drunk it was really to go out and be seen and get Working. the buzz going. And right. he talks about he did that. Wow. Wow. And so, then you also have some sample paperwork. Some oh yes. So sample P and L statements and I have and, sample P and Ls. I have my um my loyalty points for my loyalty clients. I have all of that. So what I ended up having to do, I was putting so much into this book, it was like overload and i was like i gotta because i wanted to give everybody everything i've ever used for consulting my staff you know the do's and don'ts and then i thought i need to make a, a class or a, so i did i made a module class that takes every single chapter and breaks it down even more so my whole marketing calendar is there for every month and all, all my programs i have my loyalty I have the ideal client. I have my whole branding, um, how I went about branding. And I talk about what it is, what mine is. You know, I talk about what, like, for instance, Mercedes is, Jeep is, Tiffany's is, so they can kind of see it. So I, all the sheets and paper and things I did while I consulted or put into my business is in, a lot, a lot of it touches in the book, but it's full everything's full into the um course which is rags to riches in action and where can people find that course so is this an online course is it on a regular basis or is it it's as... a 12 week course and i'll send out a module every week and then what what they'll do is they'll they'll do their work and then i give them my email address and i would love for them to you know call me or email me and say, can I spend 10, 15 minutes? And I want to help guide them along to say, you know what, if you're going to do this, you need to do this, this, and this, or don't do it at all. Very so, cool. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll put that link in our newsletter this week. And is there a certification when I'm done, if I take it? No, I mean, I can make a certification. <laughs> um, nice little piece of paper. Put on I there. could give you, yes, I could definitely give you that. But really, for any business, it's the top aspects of any business that are part, that make the business whole, mm. that are part of it. That's oh, my awesome. goodness, ladies, we we're just about out of time. Jackie, was there was there one last thing on the tip of your tongue? Pretty amazing guest, huh? What do you think? Absolutely. I mean, all business owners need someone like you, Karen. And the fact that you have this course, but then you also make time to actually talk to people, that's You're big. Busy, lady. Because yeah, uh, so lady. many coaches don't do that. They say, here's my course. Have fun with that, <laughs> you know, or good luck. Um, but I admire the fact that you, even as busy as you are, still take time to make sure that you have that personal touch with those people that are learning from you. So I, I appreciate that because I've worked with a lot of different coaches and that's not something that's, that's typically done. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, so where's your website? Where can people find you? How can they get your book and so forth? The book is on Amazon. It's Rags Riches, How Beauty Icons Made It Big. Or you can go to www.iconicriches.com, Rags to Riches, and then 
the same thing, www.iconicriches.com. Rags to Riches in Action is the course. Nice. Excellent. All right. And that'll be in the blog. It'll also be in some show notes that we have. So look for that and get in touch with Karen, especially if you're thinking about starting a salon or spa business. So thanks, Karen. Very cool. Thank you, Karen, for showing up as you today and being your honest, big hearted. Oh, my gosh, I just fell in love with you. What am I going to do now? Thank you, you, you very much. I enjoy talking to both of you today. Yeah, and I hope to see you, you soon, Jackie. I hope so too. Thank I'll be there. I'm speaking on December 7th. So I'll be there a few days before. We'll make we'll make time. These, these <laughs> two are very connected. So you connect with her too. Yes. That's about all we have time for today. Just a quick reminder, Jackie will produce a newsletter about today's show with all the links we talked about. And you can go to www.lifemasteryradio.com and sign up for that newsletter and get that newsletter every week it highlights who's been on the show who's coming on the show and of course the blog post about the most recent show lastly please 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 make it a great day because it is all about choice bye bye for now bye everybody bye Thank you for tuning in to Life Mastery Radio. Join Todd Allen and Jackie Bailey and their guests of leading authors, speakers, coaches, and entrepreneurs weekly at 10 a.m. Pacific. Learn to live a peaceful life with intentional mastery through stories and messages to support your well-being and most evocative dreams. Visit their website, www.lifemasteryradio.com. Join their mailing list and be notified about upcoming guests. That's lifemasteryradio.com.